Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to one of our celebrity life activities. This is Beyond the Volume. Today, with the topic scientific theories that were grown. And for that, I have Gary Kramer. Please put your hands together for Gary. You all know where that was. <laughs> <laughs> I know some of you were here in the previous lecture that I gave. And we got we got to go and sample this. And wasn't this beautiful? It's just wonderful. I just wish I was still there. <laughs> it closes at one, so we're out of luck. Okay. Mathematics is the only branch of science where you can unequivocally prove something is correct. And then you can move on and build on that. Every other branch of science comes up with a theory that fits the observable facts. Using that theory, you make predictions. And as long as you can validate those predictions, then that theory stands. But it can be wrong. And as you'll see, some of these theories in, in our history lasted a long time were wrong. Who knows? He actually had a recipe for generating, for, for making mice. <laughs> A piece of soil cloth and wheat and you leave it for 21 days. He had another recipe for scorpions. Basil, placed between two bricks and left in the sun. I don't know how he could have come up with this because almost every time he tried it, it must have failed. I guess maybe it happened once. Somehow that, you know, um, he left soil cloth with some wheat and then came back and found a mouse eating the wheat. I don't know, but yes, these are, this is what they believed then, and 1580 to 1644. This wasn't laid to rest until Louis Pasteur came along in 1859 again, and it was his research that showed microorganisms are responsible uh, for or doing things such as spoiling beverages, wine, beer, and milk. And of course, you've heard the name Pasteur, probably, uh, with connection of other things, too. I love some of his responses to the criticism. I, I really should remember some of these. Calculation can only lead you astray. <laughs> <laughs> Pictures of the Milky Way that showed millions of stars had been faked by reactionary scientists. <laughs> and, and here's how pervasive this crazy theory was. Well, maybe it's not so, so surprising because Hitler was crazy too, right? <laughs> but it was adopted by the Nazi party as their official cosmology. An interesting little side tip of this is when they first heard this noise, the two astronomers that heard this through, through a radio telescope, it's just this pervasive background. They thought it was due to pigeon droppings on the antenna. <laughs> it turned out not to be. It turned out to be this, this microwave background, which led us to the Big Bang Theory, which I'm not going into, because the Big Bang Theory is currently the one that we use. I don't mean the planet in Star Trek, if you were here at the last talk. <clears throat> it was postulated that somewhere between Mercury and the Sun, there was another planet. This is known as Vulcan, hot. This is an idea that this Vulcan transiting the surface of the sun and there's some sunspots. Uh, the scientists that came up with this idea uh, used the existence of Vulcan to explain some of the strange observations they made about Mercury when it goes around the sun. It, it isn't a completely elliptical orbit. And there were some perturbations in the orbit. So they thought there had to be something else there exerting gravity on Mercury to cause what they were seeing. Leverrier came up with this. He died in 1877, uh, and at the time uh, was still regarded of ha as having discovered a new planet, although nobody had actually found it at the time, but it was there explaining the observations they made. He didn't know he was wrong. He died a happy man. <laughs> Dalton's atomic theory. Remember this from school, anybody? You're going, if you do remember this, you're going to say, he's crazy, this is not wrong. There are five things here, two of them are not correct. Anybody want to take a guess as to which two are not correct? 
Two and three are wrong. I heard two and three are wrong. Three? For sure? Anybody else? Anybody who think one's wrong? Why? These are the ones that are wrong. Indeed. So here's, here's an example of a theory that's partially correct. But before we get to my favorite theory, we have to talk about alchemy, of course. You've all heard of alchemy? The search for gold, the philosopher's stone. Uh, so what they were searching for was unattainable. They did do some very interesting things, and it's true, alchemy did become chemistry. And there were some very famous alchemists, a couple of which I want to touch on. Uh, there are formulas, the Egyptian alchemists did discover formulas for making various things, glass and cosmetics, for example. This is an interesting one, uh, one alchemist I pulled out uh, around the 16 to 1700s, Hennig Brand. He made phosphorus, it's uh, a nasty element. You've probably heard of phosphorus. Well, he has a recipe, uh, five and a half thousand liters of urine. Uh, you can boil this up. And if you follow his procedure, you can make 120 grams of, of phosphorus. Uh, his procedure wasn't that great, because if he'd have done it properly, he, instead of 120 grams, he'd have got 600. So essentially what you do there is you take sand and peace syrup, and you heat it, and you heat it, and you heat it, and you end up with a, a, a wonderfully glowing flask of, of phosphorus. Uh, this is what it looks like. So the piece here from the stand and the torch stand and heat it up and you, you collect phosphorus. So I know you're all dying to go home now. <laughs> Try this out for yourselves. Uh, we'll warn you, phosphorus is a really nasty substance, so please don't try this at home. Phlogiston, this is my favorite, personally, my personal favorite phlogiston. Uh, originates in 1667 when they were trying to explain what happened when things are burned. Now remember, in these times, they only understood the four elements of earth, water, fire, and, and air, and of oxygen. So phlogiston, the phlogiston theory, lasted 116 <coughs> years. So that's a long time to be wrong. It's not as bad as the, the other one, which is 1,500 years. Now he also showed that water could be created by burning hydrogen and oxygen. You remember what I said, remember, water being the element? Well, there's no way you can create an element from two other materials. So we also knock that one on the head. And that brings me to the end of some of the theories that were wrong. <laughs>